this video, we're going to focus on solving quadratic equations using completing the square method. Now, completing the square, it has a lot of steps involved with it, but the whole purpose of completing the square is to rewrite the quadratic equation so that it has only one x or one variable written. Because whenever you have only one variable in the equation, you can solve it by isolating the variable. So you complete the square by creating a perfect square so you only have one variable written so that you can isolate the x. So we're going to go through the steps. Um, there are actually five steps and depending on if you have a leading coefficient or not there could be four steps. So we're going to solve a problem going through each of these steps. So let's jump into the first example. So we're going to solve example one um, x squared minus 3 equal negative 10x. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that it's in the form of a quadratic equation. That means you need to have 0 on one side. So we're going to take this negative 10x and we're going to move it to the other side by adding 10x to both sides. So we get x squared plus 10x minus 3 equal to 0. So now it's in the form of a quadratic equation. And the first step is if your a is not 1, a is your leading coefficient, then you have to go through and divide everything by that leading coefficient. In this example, our leading coefficient is 1, so we can actually skip step 1. So step 1 is to get rid of the leading coefficient if it's not 1. And in this case, our leading coefficient is 1, so we don't have to do that. So step 2 is you want to isolate the constant term. The constant term is the term that has no variable connected to it. So in this case, our minus 3. So we're going to isolate the constant term by adding 3 to both sides. When we add 3 to both sides, we get x squared plus 10x equal to 3. That's step 2. So now step 3 is where you actually complete your square. You create the perfect square. And you do that by taking half of the b term and squaring it. So what you want to do is you want to do half of b and you want to square that. So b in this case is 10. So you want to take half of 10 and square it. Half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So we want to um, take that value, that result, and add it to both sides of the equation. So we took half of b, we squared it, we got 25. And now we're going to add 25 to both sides of the equation. Alrighty, so what we just did was we created a perfect square. So we created a perfect square trinomial on the left side by adding that value. So the left side, what we want to do, so this is step four. Now the left side, what you want to do is you want to factor it and write it as a perfect square trinomial. And you want to simplify the right side of the equation. So essentially what you're doing is you're finding factors of 25 that add to 10. So you can think of it that way. What are two numbers that multiply to give me 25? but add to give me 10 and if you said 5 and 5 then you're correct so 5 times 5 is 25 and 5 plus 5 is 10 so this factors into x plus 5 times x plus 5 which is the same as saying x plus 5 squared and that was the whole purpose of completing the square because we wanted to create a perfect square and this will work every time so actually, you could do an even shorter method instead of thinking about this. This variable will always be the same as this variable. This sign will always be the same as this sign. And this number will always be half of that number. So when it factors, it'll always look like this, x plus b over 2 squared. This sign will depend on whatever the b is. So if the b is positive, that sign will be positive. If b is negative, that sign will be negative. And then on the right side, you just add the 3 and the 25, and you get 28. And so we just accomplished our goal of rewriting the quadratic equation, or rewriting the quadratic so that it has only one variable. Once it has only one variable, then you can solve by isolating that variable. So this is actually step 5. We can solve using the square root property. Um, so we isolate x. That means we have to get rid of the square first. So you will take the square root of both sides. And you get x plus 5 equal. And whenever you take the square root, you have to take the plus or minus square root. So you get x plus 5 equal plus or minus square root of 28. Get rid of the 5 by subtracting 5 from both sides. And you get x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 28. Can the square root of 28 be simplified further? 
Um, well, is there a perfect square under the 28? Yeah, so let's think about that. The square root of 28 is 4 times 7. So you're, you're trying to see if you could pull out a perfect square. And 4, 9, 16, 25, those are your perfect squares. So you can actually write it as 4 times 7, which is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. Well, what's the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is 2. So this is equal to 2 square root of 7. So that means your final answer is negative 5 plus or minus 2 square root of 7. Now, that is two separate answers. That's x equal to negative 5 plus 2 square root of 7. And that's x equal to negative 5 minus 2 square root of 7. So that's two separate answers. You can write them separated like this, or you can write them together like this with the plus and minus in between those. And so this is an example of solving a quadratic equation using completing the square method. Okay, let's look at another example. Example two, we want to also solve this equation, quadratic equation, using the completing the square method. We have negative 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 equals 0. And what we want to do is we want to go through each of the steps for the process. And so remember the whole goal is to create a perfect square so that we can write the quadratic equation so that it has only one variable present. So only one x written in the actual equation. So the first step is if a is not 1, then you have to go through and divide everything by 1. Well, in this case, our a is not 1. Our a is negative 2. a is referring to the leading coefficient. So we need to go through and divide everything by negative 2. And when I divide by negative 2, everything by negative 2, I get x squared plus 3 halves x plus 5 halves equal to 0. So what we did was we got rid of our leading coefficient that was in the front. We basically created a leading coefficient of 1. All right. So step 2 is you want to isolate the constant term. Well, the constant term is the term that has no variable connected to it. So that's 5 halves. So we're going to isolate 5 halves by subtracting 5 halves from both sides. And so we get x squared plus 3 halves x equal negative 5 halves. At 3, we want to actually complete the perfect square. And we do that by taking half of the b term and squaring it. This time, since our b is a fraction, to take half of it, so 3 halves, we're actually going to multiply by 1 half. And we want to square it. So 3 halves times 1 half is 3 fourths. 3 fourths squared, that means square the numerator and square the denominator, is 9 over 16. So this is our b over 2 squared, 9 over 16. And so this is what we want to add to both sides. So here's our equation. I'm going to come and I'm going to add 9 over 16 to both sides of this equation. Okay, so then step three or step four is you want to factor the left side, write it as a perfect square trinomial, and you want to combine like terms or simplify on the right side. So this will always factor into a perfect square trinomial. The variable will always be dropped down from here, so it's x. This sign will also be dropped down, which is plus, and the number that goes here is half of this number. So half of the b. So 3 halves, half of 3 halves we saw here is 3 fourths. So 3 fourths go here. So again, this 3 fourths came from taking half of this number, which means you multiply by 1 half. And that's what we did here. So essentially what goes here is what you're squaring. Whatever you square goes here. And then in order to combine these, you need a common denominator. So the denominator, common denominator will be 16. So in order to get a 16, we need to multiply the top and bottom by 8. And that will give us negative 40 over 16 plus 9 over 16. And then simplify that. So you get x plus 3 fourths squared 
equal negative 40 plus 9 is negative 31 over 16. And so I left this space over here so I could come and finish working the problem here. So we end up with x plus 3 fourths squared equal to negative 31 over 16. And so now you can solve step 5 by isolating the variable. So get rid of the square. So take the square root of both sides. And whenever you take the square root, you take the plus or minus square root. So you get x plus 3 fourths. The square root and the square root cancel here. Equal the plus or minus the square root of negative 31 over 16. Move the 3 fourths over. So subtract 3 fourths from both sides. And you get x is equal to negative 3 fourths plus or minus the square root of negative 31 over 16. Well, the square root of negative 31 over 16 can be broken down as the negative square root of 31 over a square root of 16, which looks like this. Anytime you have a negative underneath the square root, it becomes an i. So you get x equal negative 3 fourths plus or minus i square root of 31, and the square root of 16 is 4. And so your final answer is negative 3 fourths plus or minus i square root of 31 over 4. And you typically write your i at the end. So I'm just going to rewrite it as square root of 31 over 4i. And again, that's two answers. That's negative 3 fourths plus the square root of 31 over 4i and negative 3 fourths minus the square root of 31 over 4i. And so this is another example of solving a quadratic equation using the completeness square method. Okay, now it's your turn to practice. I want you to see if you can solve this quadratic equation using the completing the square method. So take a minute, pause the video, and try this problem. Okay, so let's see if you got it right. Your first step should be to factor or divide out A if A is not 1. And in this example, A is actually 1, so you don't have to divide A out. So you can actually skip step 1. Step 2 is to isolate the variable. So you should have added 3 to both sides. Or isolate not the variable, but the constant term. So x squared plus 14x equal 3. Step 3 is where you actually create your perfect square. So you take half of the b term and you square it. Your b term, so you're going to take half of b and square it. That means you should have taken half of 14 and squared it. Well, that is 7 squared, which is 49. And so that is what you want to add to both sides. You want to add 49 to both sides. So you get x squared plus 14x plus 49 equal 3 plus 49. So once you do this, step 3 is you want to write the left side as a perfect square trinomial. So this is going to be your variable x, your sign here is positive, and half of 14 is 7. And for those of you who wonder, like, where did the 49 go? I get that question a lot. The 49 is actually in here x plus 7 squared is x plus 7 times x plus 7. If you FOIL that out, multiply that back out, you get x squared plus 14 x plus 49. So that 49 is in here, okay? It's just written in a different form, a different format. Alrighty. So then on the right side, you add the 3 and the 49 and you get 52. So now you're at the final step, step 5, which is the whole purpose. You re rewrote the quadratic equation so that it only has one variable in it. Now you can isolate that variable. So get x by itself. Get rid of the square. Take the square root of both sides. Whenever you take the square root, you have to take the positive and negative square root. So the square root and the square cancel here. You get x plus 7. So you get plus or minus the square root of 52. Isolate x. Get rid of the 7. So subtract 7 from both sides. You get x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 52. And so the question is, can the square root of 52 be simplified? Is there a perfect square underneath that um, square root? Meaning, can 52 be written as a product of a perfect square? Can you think of one? Can you think of one? Yes, actually, 4 goes into 52. 4 goes into 52 three times. So if you break 52 down, the square root of 52, that's the square root of 4 times 13, which can be broken as the square root of 4 times the square root of 13 
which is 2 square roots of 13. So you get x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus 2 square root of 13. Again, that is two answers. Um, depending on what you're using for your homework, if you're using my math lab or Alex, any computerized program, um, it may give you the option to put the plus or minus, or it may ask you to separate them. So if you separate them, it will be x equal to negative 7 plus 2 square root of 13 and x equal to negative 7 minus 2 square root of 13. So either way it goes, just remember that that is two solutions. And so this is how you solve quadratic equations using completing the square. Did you get that right? I hope you did. If not, watch the video again. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. Also, make sure you subscribe. I have more math content for you. And I'm working on pushing it out as fast as I can. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get notification when I send a new, when I upload something new. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.